Welcome to the South Knotts Amateur Radio Club online foundation training and today we're going to discuss safety. We're going to discuss power, voltage, earths and batteries, antenna and RF safety, shack safety, using tools and operating outdoors. So we'll start with voltage and current. High voltage carries a risk of electrocution High current carries the risk of overheating and fire. Take care with mains powered equipment. These run at 230 volts AC and touching both the live and neutral could be fatal. Switch off and unplug any equipment before working on it and when servicing equipment, only if you're competent to do so, always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Electrocution. If you discover an electrocution victim, the first thing you must do is disconnect the power immediately. You don't want to go and reach for them and get electrocuted yourself. Also, you don't want them to continue being electrocuted if they're still touching a live system. So disconnect the power immediately. Ensure the power is off before touching the victim. And then summon medical help. This is critical and it could be life savings for somebody. Earths. A mains earth connection prevents metalwork becoming live in fault conditions. If equipment has a mains earth fitted, the earth must not be disconnected under any circumstances. Don't mix the mains earth with the RF earth either. Be aware that some homes use PME, which stands for Protective Multiple Earthing, and special care is needed. You should contact your district network operator before making a change such as adding an RF earth. So what is a district network operator? The company responsible for supplying the mains electricity to your premises is the district network operator, and the UK is split into several regions each with its own DNO. For a list and contact details, see www.offgem.gov.uk. Mains plugs. Here you can see in the picture a mains plug with the back taken off it, and you'll see three wires a brown, which is the live wire, a neutral, which is blue and a yellow-green wire, which is the earth connection. Check the plug and cable is undamaged. Check the correct fuse is used, and you can calculate this using the uh, equation the power equals the voltage multiplied by the current. Make sure you avoid whiskers, which are little pieces of wire that uh, stick out and touch other things by accident. Make sure the whole wire is in the connection firmly. And you want to make sure that the flex, which is the main part of the wire, the white piece at the bottom there, is secured firmly so that it cannot pull out. Fuses. A fuse is a safety device that contains a thin wire, and this wire will melt with excessive current, breaking the circuit and switching things off. The fuse must be fitted in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions, and a fuse of the correct value must be used. If a fuse blows, you should investigate why and hopefully find the cause of the blown fuse rather than just fitting a new fuse and carrying on. RCBO. This stands for Residual Current Circuit Breaker with overcurrent protection. They offer better protection against electric shock than a standard fuse. An RCBO will detect currents to earth of about 30 milliamps, whereas a fuse will only blow at several amps and only when the fault is a short circuit. For example, live to neutral or live to earth. Battery safety. Take care with batteries and avoid short circuits. Even a low voltage battery can overheat and cause a fire. Some batteries can supply very high currents, which can be hazardous if subjected to short circuit. D 
different battery technologies require different charging techniques and must use the correct type of charger. Battery charging must be in accordance with the manufacturer instructions. Lithium batteries in particular can cause fire and explosion if not properly treated. Handle with care, some batteries contain corrosive chemicals as well. Shack safety. Ensure your shack has a single, clearly marked master off switch and that everyone knows where it is. In the event of a problem, if a friend of the family comes round and they walk in, it needs to be clearly marked and easily accessible at the door. Switching this off makes the room safe and therefore any further help that's needed to the victim of the electrocution, for example, can be done in a safe manner. Take care when using headphones. Loud noises can damage your hearing. and Damage can be cumulative, meaning over time, loud noises will make things get worse and worse and worse. Trailing wires are a trip hazard. In our hobby, unfortunately, we have a lot of wires, power wires, coaxial cables, etc. Make sure these are neat and tidy and in a safe location. And watch out for frayed insulation on cables. Uh, this could mean if it's a power cable, you may be liable to a, an electric shock by touching it. So look out for any uh, deterioration of, of cabling, etc. The final thing is to avoid liquids near equipment. Obviously, uh, liquids touching electrics can cause major problems. Tool safety. Eye protection must be worn when using tools to prevent eye damage from small metal particles, otherwise known as SWARF. All tools, including power tools, can be hazardous and should be handled and stored with care and appropriate precautions taken. Following the manufacturer's instructions is important too. Soldering. Eye protection must be worn when soldering to prevent solder or flux from splashing into the eyes. A soldering iron stand must be used to avoid skin contacts with a hot bit of the iron, particularly when not in use. Soldering workstations must be well ventilated to avoid inhalation of solder fumes, which can cause breathing problems, particularly to asthmatics. Working at height. Using a ladder, make sure you secure it so it doesn't slip. Do not overreach, which could cause a fall. And the correct angle for a ladder to be at is four measurements high by one out from the wall. So for example, if you position the ladder to be touching the wall at a height of four meters, the base of the ladder should be out from the wall a distance of one meters. That ratio there, 4 to 1, applies to any distance and height. At least one adult should be present to help in case of a problem. And use a tool belt and be careful not to drop items. Hard hats should be worn when working at height or when others are working at height and you're nearby. RF safety. Exposure to RF radiation can be dangerous. It can heat body tissue and the eyes are particularly susceptible to the damage. You can get guidance on safe radiation levels from Public Health England and the ICNIRP, which stands for the International Commission on Non-Ionising Radiation Protection. Waveguides are devices that focus radio waves, typically at microwave frequencies. Looking down a waveguide or standing too close to high gain antennas whilst they are in use can be dangerous. RF burns. RF burns can be very nasty and the effects are not always felt immediately. Do not touch an antenna or other conductors whilst transmitting. Antennas should be positioned so that no one can accidentally come in contact with them. Insulated wires such as antennas and feeder cable can still give an RF burn. Please be careful when wearing watches, rings, etc. 
near RF as these can conduct the current as well. Antenna safety. Antennas and the feeder must be suitably located and secured safely. Avoid overhead cables and phone lines. There is a risk of a lethal shock if antennas, ladders or feeders come into contact with or attract arcing from mains power lines. There is a risk of lightning strike on high antennas and special protection may be needed. Local authorities can offer advice. Car safety. Many people advise against using amateur radio whilst driving for the following reasons. It is a distraction, possibly resulting in a lack of attention. Unsecured equipment can cause damage if the vehicle stops suddenly. And taking your hands from the wheel to adjust your radio equipment or to key, key up is dangerous. So please bear these in mind if you're operating. Outdoor safety. Operating in temporary premises and or outdoors can introduce new hazards. Temporary mains connections, trailing cables, damp ground etc. Extra safety precautions that should be taken are things like assessing the risks, routing cable, cables carefully and thinking protection in all aspects whether it's lightning, correct fusing, RCBOs etc. If unsure, seek advice. Safety principles. Safety is everybody's responsibility. Safety is important for you in your own shack, family and visitors, plus at club events and on field events. Stay alert to any potentially unsafe circumstances, warn others and report the matter to the appropriate person as soon as possible. So in summary, a quick review of these points. Uh, we've understood the dangers of high voltage and current. Do not touch a casualty until the power is disconnected. Understand mains plugs, fuses and earth. Understand the dangers of RF burns. Take care with ladders and antennas. Keep your shack safe with a conveniently positioned off switch and watch for wires uh, make sure there's no trip hazards as this is a common problem and be aware of the risks when operating outdoors again if you have any questions about this, these slides please contact your tutor I think most of these are common sense anyway but it's just good to review them uh, to bring them to the front of your mind, particularly if you're setting up your own shack at the moment.